Ever get the sinking feeling when this happens? Could a glass or plastic screen protector helped in this fiasco? Monty and I over the last few months have tested 29 different screen protectors. And today we're gonna to talk about six undeniable differences between plastic screen protectors and glass screen protectors. Ready for some life-changing intel? Let's get started. I like complicated things, said no one ever. When it comes to installation, glass hands down is the easiest to install. With cheaper products, you get basically hopes and prayers for installation. You just get a pane of glass and maybe some install tools. If you pay a bit more money, you get these fancy installation trays that make installation a cinch. For example, let's take a product from RhinoShield and a product from Flowlab. Both these products cost about the same. This is about $32, this is about $30. The 3D impact basically comes like this. Whereas the Flowlab product comes with an install tray that actually fits, is designed to fit your actual iPhone. Whole thing, all of it. Regardless of tools or lack thereof, the reality from my perspective is that glass screen protectors are just easier to install. Why? Because the rigidity allows you to really line up the edge of the screen protector with the edge of your iPhone. Makes it really easy. Plastic screen protectors, not so much. Here's something that will make you laugh. This is a film protector and there's three in this pack, but this wonderful company only gave me one set of install tools. I haven't used it yet, I'm saving it. The icing with these plastic screen protectors is that you can actually damage it while you install it. Now plastic and glass offer both unique protection strengths. On one hand, plastic reigns supreme in terms of impact, but glass reigns supreme in terms of scratches. That was a really dangerous thing to do given that there's a lot of like glass shards. <laughs> Consider this, typical glass scratches at a Mohs level of seven. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody by now. Plastic on the other hand, gets absolutely destroyed. Oh, at seven. <laughs> the limit for my testing is number three. Three is still gonna leave a mark, but it's not that noticeable. That's gonna matter a lot when you're carrying your iPhone or whatever with your keys in your pocket. It's gonna, your keys actually might scratch the screen protectors, whereas in with glass, yeah, nothing's gonna happen. Now for those who are sporting Apple's latest iPhones, like the 12, 13, and 14, the ceramic sealed on the iPhone is actually very impact resistant. I've tested it, it's pretty awesome. But scratch protection has not been improved. I know I just showed you an iPhone with the screen protector. This is an iPhone 14 that I rarely use, and there is a gash right in the middle. Like, Monty, what did you do to it? Now for those who prioritize impact protection over scratch, hands down, go with plastic. Out of the 29 screen protectors that I've tested, there's one here, the Rhino Shield 3D Impact. There were three times where I couldn't break the glass through the screen protector. It's that tough. But here's another difference you have to consider. Now, if you get some impact damage with a plastic screen protector, you'll end up with like this. You have the impact, but then the screen protector will be raised around that point of impact. If it's along the edge of your device, that screen protector is gonna peel off. And then you're left with a bare iPhone that's gonna scratch. Boo. But with glass screen protectors, more often than not, nothing is going to happen. Like sure, you have glass shards and you might turn your finger into sushi, but you know, put some packing tape over it and you're good to go. All you have to do is just impatiently check the two day Amazon Prime delivery that's gonna take four days to show up now, right? Want more unbiased reviews? Make sure you hit the bell so that every single time Monty shows up on the internet, you get notified. Seriously, what could possibly be more annoying than unboxing your brand new iPhone and getting a screen protector that just turns the screen into an absolute pixelated mess. Let's talk about image quality. Glass screen protectors are your go-to if you want to enjoy your iPhone's like, you know, retina display in all its glory. Most plastic screen protectors, they do a decent job of showing off, you know, your beautiful screen. But beware, certain products like the Autobox Free where the screen protector is not stuck to the screen, it just kind of floats, the screen quality goes down. A lot. You're gonna deal with certain levels of rainbowing. It's not too bad right now, but you also have this grid of dots that's uh, gonna annoy you over time. Now, the most annoying thing about plastic screen protectors when it comes to clarity is body grease. Unfortunately, when it comes to oleophobic coatings on plastic, they are much worse than glass. All the plastic screen protectors I tested sat in the lower half of the rankings. Now, when it comes to touch sensitivity, nothing beats glass. When it came to plastic screen protectors, same thing. No issues with touch sensitivity except for the ones that float on the screen. Now touch sensitivity used to be a pretty big issue when we had iPhones that had curved 
edges like so, because a lot of manufacturers, they actually wouldn't curve the glass to fit the iPhone. They would just make a flat piece of glass and then throw in some adhesive so that the edges wouldn't crack. But because the iPhone screens now are completely flat, we don't have that issue anymore. The last thing I will mention is that these PET screen protectors, they are very, they're, they're, they almost feel sticky when they're brand new. And so like when you run your finger across a glass screen protector, it's smooth. But with these PET ones, they are incredibly sticky. And so your finger just kind of goes, eh, 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 eh. it gets better once you get some face grease onto it, but then your screen, screen clarity just goes to crap. All right. Let's talk about monies. I know a lot of you go with the mantra, buy cheap, replace often. And if you're terrible with your products, well, that's not a bad way to go. And that approach kind of reminds me of how I deal with donuts. Why spend $5 on one donut when you could spend $5 and get 10 donut holes? No, that doesn't work. It's like choosing to spend $40 on a pair of underwear or $40 on a 24 pack. The $40 pair kind of has like special features to like, you know, keep things in place, feels very luxurious. Whereas in the $2 pair, well, it just feels like everything's on the rise all the time. Now, every once in a while, you'll stumble across a less pricey version that offers, you know, the same support uh, as the really expensive pair. But, you know, where do you find stuff like that? Again, Monty and I have done all the legwork to figure out the best bang for your buck in terms of screen protector. So do check that top five uh, screen protector video out. Now, from my perspective, there really isn't a big difference between your plastic screen protectors like these ones up here and just normal tempered glass screen protectors. $30, $40, $45, this is $45. Even the cheapest film one was three and a half dollars per screen protector, which is still 50 cents more than these guys, which was $3 for screen protector. And this is glass. So don't be bamboozled by the high price tags. They don't necessarily mean they're better products. The one thing you can bank on in terms of cost is action materials, which is what we're talking about next. Plastic screen protectors, these ones up here, they all start with PET polyethylene terephthalate or something? I don't know. You know those plastic containers that are impossible to open? Yeah, it's made from the same stuff. It's just a thin piece of plastic, that's why it's so cheap, three and a half dollars per, per application. When you start going up in price, like the Rhino Shield and the mouse, as well as this Alpha Flex thing, you get a layer of PET, you got basically this film, but then you get some TPU on top of it, and that's, you know, the impact absorbing stuff. Now I will admit these PET TPU screen protectors, back in the day, there were a lot of brands that were like self-healing, which is pretty cool, you know, it just heal up the micro scratches. Now when it comes to glass, these guys, you got, you got the simple tempered glass, you got the double tempered glass and then over here I don't have the box you've got the sapphire glass the stuff that's grown in the lab so those are the main differences in terms of materials you start off really cheap and then the more stuff you add to it just gets more expensive before we continue on have you guys used plastic screen protectors and what were your experiences with them I'd like to know the last difference we'll talk about is lifespan of each product say you've got a glass screen protector it's kind of like a scrappy boxer could take a nasty hit and it'll still stay on your screen your screen is still protected and the easiest way to stop your fingers from getting cut up is to, well, put some packing tape on it. How about plastic screen protectors? If they are in perfect condition, you can actually take them off, put them back on, you know, <laughs> switch, switch in between devices if you really wanted to. The adhesives, you can generally, you know, run underwater and wash them. But here's the thing with plastic screen protectors. First of all, because they scratch so easily when you're installing them, like so, if you don't keep the film or you're doing something else to it, or you take the film off and you're like, oh no, there's plastic bubbles, or there's bubbles everywhere, and you're scratching it out, there's a good chance, there is a chance you might scratch your screen protector before you actually start using your iPhone. And that's just silly. But say we do the same thing, bad impact, pow, 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 pow. If we did it at the corner, this corner is gonna start collecting dust and then eventually it's gonna just peel right off. I'm gonna guess you're gonna use your iPhone like this for about seven minutes and then just rip the thing right off. Now before we get to the top three, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And plus, if you're planning on getting a product, make sure you use our links because no one's paying us to do this video. We're reviewers, not influencers, right Monty? All right, here's the top three. Now in retrospect, should have done a top two because this OtterBox Alpha Flex is absolutely terrible. Like this product in our testing is number 21 out of 29. And the biggest gut punch for this product is that it's $45. Number two goes to these guys, the Rhino Show 3D Impact. And this is, again, toughest screen protector that we've used. The biggest downfall for this product is that it doesn't come with a lot of installation tools. So a lot of the glass ones, again, come with frames, woo! From my perspective, this is the baseline for plastic screen protectors, these guys. 
And in the top spot is the mouse hybrid glass. And the best thing about this product in terms of plastic screen protectors is the insulation tool. It is just so easy to install this product. They've got this neat little applicator that you plug into um, the bottom of your iPhone. Then you line it up with the stickers down here and you just literally just it onto your iPhone. The hybrid glass offered the best edge protection, as you can see here. And this is the product that feels the closest to glass. I think there is like a liquid glass layer on top of it. It feels incredibly smooth, just like regular glass. It's pretty awesome. So basically that's all I know about glass and plastic screen protectors. If this video is useful, don't keep it to yourself. Make sure you smash that share button and let somebody else know if they're thinking about getting a plastic or glass screen protector. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, click the link for the email list. Uh, yeah, that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching.